Hi everybody, my name is Bree and welcome back to my channel, Bree's Arts. Alright everybody, so I'm super excited because today's video is sponsored by Cricut and I will be showing you some super easy Easter decor DIYs. Now these DIYs are loosely inspired by some things that I saw on Kirkland's. Now you guys know that I love doing Kirkland's dupes, so what better combo than Cricut? Kirkland's dupes and Easter. Now with all of that being said, you guys, let's get into the first DIY. All right, you guys, so for today's projects, I will be using my Cricut Maker 3. And for those of you who are not familiar, Cricut is a smart cutting machine that allows you to create personalized projects with hundreds of materials. It works with software called Design Space that comes free with your machine. This is where you can create your project and browse from hundreds of images and fonts. Once you've decided on your design, Design Space will send it to your machine to cut. And so with DIY number one, I was inspired by this canvas that I saw on Kirkland's. It's $79.99. And I'm using these three pieces from Dollar Tree and painting them all with my white chalk paint. And you can see here, I'm just going to cut off uh, that little end there of the bottom one just so that it all lines up. And then using these beautiful rub-ons also from the Dollar Tree. I'm just using that wreath there and I'm rubbing that on. And remember, when you're using these rub-ons, if it doesn't all come off all at once, you can stick it back down and then rub it back on and it comes off like a dream. And these rub-ons, you guys, are stunning. So now using my favorite tissue paper from Dollar Tree, I am just going to Mod Podge that down onto that one block there. And with the tissue paper, you don't wanna to use too heavy of a coat of the Mod Podge and just pat it down. Don't rub it because if you do, you might rip your tissue paper. And then of course, sanding off all of the edges just like that. And so for this bottom piece and the inspiration photo, it was it had some lines in it, right? So I'm just using some of this washi tape from the Dollar Tree and I'm using my measuring mat. You can see there I'm lining it up um, to make sure that these lines are nice and straight. This measuring mat is amazing, you guys. If you don't have one, get one. I got mine off of Amazon. I'll try to remember to link it down below. And you can see there that I turned it so I can do the vertical stripes as well. And again, just using my measuring mat, it's an inch between each one there. So there we go. And then I did tape off the sides there with some painter's tape. And using my moss green um, chalk paint by Waverly, just giving that a coat over top of my of my tape there. And now, oh my goodness, you guys, are you ready for some eye candy? Because these lines came off so crisp, it's ridiculous. So just removing all of that washi tape from underneath, it worked like a charm arm you guys and if you're concerned about bleeding a really good trick is to take some Mod Podge and just put it over top first and it comes off like a dream but look at this oh beautiful and then I felt like the green was just a little too green so I did take some white chalk paint and a stencil brush and uh, just dry brushed over top and now to des into design space so here you can see I used three squares that I got from the shapes menu and I am just sizing them to 
each one of my pieces that I painted white there. And the reason for that is I want to make sure that the designs that I'm using and going to cut with my Cricut are the correct size. And then you can kind of see what it's gonna look like at the end, right? And I always do like to change the color of those to um, gray, so it's a little bit easier to see. Now using some text and the font, I believe it was Burger and Fries, I am just going to just finagle that around a little bit and I'm going to type out welcome all in capital letters and then move that into my square and then we are just going to space those letters out and make it just a little bit bigger so that it fits right in my square just like that you guys it's so easy I love this technique to actually create the dimensions on a square first and then uh, create it in design space it works so handy and this is right on my phone so then I just went into images and I typed in bunny silhouette and found this one which I thought was absolutely perfect and just resized it so that it would fit on that uh, decor piece there and then again with another text box using burger and fries and just um, typed every and you can see there, I'm just trying to size it. And then using my Bickley script font, I typed out bunny. And then we're just going to put that a little bit on an angle. And we are going to weld those words together so that they cut together when we send them to the Cricut. And that is it, how easy is that you guys? So now I'm just deleting my squares there and I am going to click make it. Now I am using my Cricut Maker 3, so I am using Smart Vinyl, which means I don't have to use a mat. It is so slick, you guys. And I just resized it and am choosing permanent vinyl. And here you can see I'm just sliding a piece of my smart vinyl into the machine using the guides, pressing the uh, enter button, I guess, the two arrows. And then you can see here that the Cricut is actually measuring out to make sure that I have enough material. And now we push the play button and the magic happens. This is such an amazing machine, oh my goodness. It will change your crafting game, I promise you. Now the Cricut Maker 3 is also lightning fast, so it cuts out your designs so quickly, it blows my mind. And so when the machine is all done cutting, the eject button will flash. You just press it and it pops right out with your design. So here we go, you guys. Here's a little bit of weeding. Now, this Smart Vinyl is so easy to weed. You can see here, I'm literally just pulling it up. Um, you don't really have to be too, too careful because the cutting happens so perfectly. Um, a lot of times when I would use my other machine, it would not cut right through. So this is slick. And so I just throw some transfer tape over my designs after they're all weeded out and then cut them down so that I can put them on each one of my blocks here. So I'm just burnishing it down with my little scraper tool from Cricut and throwing my welcome word right over top of that wreath. And there it is, you guys, how easy. So I am going to do that to all three of my pieces, putting the bunny down, making sure that it's nice and centered, and then rubbing it down with my tool. And then for the last one, the every bunny, 
just throw that on the bottom. Now I know this isn't exactly like the inspiration piece. The inspiration is just a canvas. And so when I saw it, I was like, I can do three different things and then I can put them in three different configurations. It's insane. And the one from Kirkland's was 80 bucks. I did mine for five, you guys. I love it so much. into DIY number two and here is the inspiration this one is loosely based on the inspiration piece you guys so I got this cute little stand like it's like a sandwich board almost from Dollarama and I took off the stickers and whatnot and I am using the side that has the chalkboard on it. Now, of course, if you can't find this piece, you guys, you can absolutely just use a sign from Dollar Tree. I just thought that this would be really cute as like a little sign. And so I taped off all the edges of the frame and I am just going over the chalkboard portion of the, of the sign with my white chalk paint. And I did I definitely did two coats. I don't know. I might have done three, but two for sure. Now this plank of wood is five inches long. I did get it from um, Dollar Tree and I'm using my uh, wood tint. This is actually in a gray color. Now this is the first time I've used this. Um, I don't see that this is gray to be completely honest. Let me know what you think. Um, I think it came out as more natural than anything, but I was trying to um, come up with a color that was as close as possible to the frame that I already had there. So it was pretty close. And then you can see there that I did paint up or, or stain up, I guess, um, four of the Django blocks as well from the Dollar Tree. And you can see here, I am also just throwing a little bit of my white chalk paint across just to distress it down just a little bit. And then taking some hot glue, just gluing those um, tumbling tower blocks into place to create kind of like a little pocket. And you will see why. <laughs> And so on my Cricut, I did cut out this on the, um, the permanent vinyl as well. And so I have bunny bait and I used um, images right out of design space as well. If you guys are interested in uh, getting these exact images, um, I will, you can, you can just email me. You can email me and I will send them to you um, as a JPEG and then you can upload them into your Cricut. And so you can see here, homegrown, fresh, local, and organic, and this is bunny bait. Now I know a lot of creators are doing the bunny bait thing, you guys. I just thought it was super cute and it came from that inspiration photo from Kirkland's. So I love, love, love this project. And you can see there, I'm just kind of, you know, fixing some stuff that didn't quite stick perfectly. And so these carrots I got at Dollar Tree as well. I didn't like the tops of them. I thought they, they just looked kind of cheap. So I'm just taking some greenery that I got out of my greenery stash. I have tons of it. And I just pulled off the original stuff and I'm hot gluing this more natural looking greenery onto my carrots here. Just using some hot glue and I do three of them. And so here I am just hot gluing that little pocket kind of thing down onto the sign and here is where we're gonna throw some Spanish moss inside and then 
these carrots are like a little bit squishy. I think they're probably they're just styrofoam underneath. So I'm just kind of crunching them down and making sure that they can fit inside the little pocket that we created there. And then just filling that up with a little bit more Spanish moss. Isn't this so cute? It's like a little crate that's on the front of the sign. Oh, I just love it so much. It's so cute. And of course, you know, I didn't want it to look too messy, so I'm cutting off some of my Spanish moss there. And that is it for this project. Like how easy was that, you guys? And so the original canvas on Kirkland's was 50 bucks and I did mine for five. Check that out. everybody I'm just popping in here to make sure that you are enjoying these DIYs and to remind you that if you like what you see please like this video and subscribe it really really helps my channel out and helps me to bring you more projects so with that being said you guys let's get back into those DIYs all right, you guys, last one, DIY number three. Okay, so this is another canvas. All three of these were inspired by canvases at Kirkland's with these little bunny butts. They're so cute. So I took three of these little mason jar decor pieces that I found at Dollar Tree, sanded them completely down so that all of the words were gone, and it actually left this really nice wood grain. It, it looked really, really good. And using some stencil vinyl, I did uh, cut these stencils out on my Cricut as well. And you can see there, I'm just placing one on each one of my mason jars. Now I am using my square there to make sure that everything is all lined up because we wanna be sure that our bunny butts are nice and straight and nice and centered as well in each one of these mason jars. So just using my tool, burnishing those down and making sure that they are nice and adhered to each one of the jars. So I just press it down with my finger, just really nice and solid. And so again, I am using my moss green from uh, Waverly and my sponge roller. And this is the easiest way to do it, you guys. You can use a paintbrush too, obviously. I just thought that the sponge roller was like super, super fast. And just going over, I only did one coat of paint on each one of these jars. So just drying that up a little bit with my heat gun. And then I am going to dry brush a little bit over this with my white chalk paint just to distress it down just a little bit while the stencil is still in place because I didn't want to get any of that on the wood grain obviously right so going over that with my little stencil brush from Dollar Tree and then I am going to just use my weeding tool here and pull up the stencil and it comes off absolutely perfectly so just another look at this I am going to use celery um, by Waverly as well just throwing a little bit on that plate there going to use my um, my roller again and do the exact same thing on the second jar with the lighter color using some of my white chalk paint to distress it down and then we will be peeling that little bunny up to reveal the wood underneath. Now, if you wanted to do this project, you could also just cut out some little white bunnies and that would, would work great too. 
Now the last jar I did with my Nantucket Blue and I did the exact same thing. So here I'm using another one of these decor pieces from Dollar Tree and I'm just painting the whole thing up in white. All of the edges and everything except for the bottom because you'll see why in a second. And just using some uh, jute cord I wrap that around the top of the mason jars, all three of them. Just wrap, 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 wrap. And then you saw there I did use my little long reach lighter there to get rid of all of the fuzzies that are on the jute string there. And here I am going to make a simple bow for each one of the jars. Now you'll see here as well, so I check it out and then I put a dot of hot glue and then I just pinched all of those together so that they kind of came to a you know a point so it looked like it was kind of tied together for that bow and I did that for all three as well now here I am just using my drill and I'm making kind of a pattern so you can see there I did two holes in the center and then going across I did two more holes on each side with with my drill here so here's a little bit of a closer look that's kind of the pattern that we were going for because I'm going to put some of these beautiful sparkly gorgeous um, egg I would maybe they're eggplants <laughs> I got them at Dollarama. They're so pretty. I'm using blue ones and also you'll see that I did use some white ones and they came with this beautiful greenery as well. So you can see I just kind of dismantled it and I'm sticking each one of my picks into those holes and it comes out so great you guys. So here I'm just hot gluing the um, bottom to some cork because I just wanted to protect my surface that it's sitting on. And then just cutting away the excess with my craft knife, just like that. And here you can see I'm using my measuring mat, you guys, get a measuring mat. And I'm just lining all of my jars up on here. And that is is it for this project you guys it's so freaking cute i can't i cannot even get over it so there's the inspiration piece again it was just a canvas for 32 bucks and mine was only eight dollars and i love it everybody that's it for these Cricut Easter Kirkland's dupes I love these jars I can't get over how stinking cute they are I love 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 them now as always you guys let me know down in the comments what you think and which one of these is your favorite if you're gonna tackle any of these for your Easter decor I oh can't even oh I can't even. I want to send a huge shout out and a big thank you to Cricut for sponsoring this video. And if you like what you see, do me a solid. Tap that like button, maybe subscribe, tell your friends, you know, all of that jazz. Stay tuned for the gag reel. Bye guys. Sun is shining. Good day for some dupes. Shoop, shoop, baby. Shoop. Oh. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So for today's video, I'm so excited because. Ah. Work on that double chin.
<laughs> Is it work? Hmm. <laughs> this looks so stupid. <sighs> All right, everybody, I hope you're in. Does anybody else? Tell me, tell me. I'm getting to that age where there are some random. I don't want to call them whiskers, but they're whiskers. And I can feel it right there. <gasps> Drives me bananas. Drives me bananas. Mine's too close. You know, sometimes people send me pictures of them watching my video and I'm like up on their TVs. <laughs> That's crazy. This mug on the big screen. I literally, you guys just threw my hair up like super fast. Just for you. All right, y'all. Seriously, let me know down in the comments. Do you guys have a cricket? Do you want a cricket? Do you have a cricket in a box in your closet that you haven't pulled out? Because now is the time. Get that thing out of the box, set it up. It will change your life, I promise.